Uh oh. What were you doing in there, lass? My stalker, my my neighbor, Rob. He's in there. I I heard him. He might need medical attention. I can't go back in there. He was oh god. Now slow down, lassie. Tell old Don what's what. Rob. Robert Crow, he's my neighbor and one of my best friends. So I thought. He's the one who's been calling me, encouraging me to think it was my ex, Gavin. He put the idea in my head. Oh, God, it's so obvious now I think about it. But but Rob's not a bad guy. He's not okay. He's not okay. He was trying to protect me. <sighs> no, then. Sounds like he's in need of help. But that doesn't mean that you need to put up with this nonsense. Or let it hurt you. Yeah, I know. But I heard him. Can you at least go in and check on him? See if he needs first aid? I don't rightly think I can, lassie. Can I? And I think that you know why. He won't be in there if you go in, will he? Aye. You understand this place better than most of us did when we first got here. I... I think I do. This is the sepulchre, right? Aye. Oh, Gloria. <laughs> the engine of death. Only... Only... Tonight we make our last stop. It's all thanks to you. You and Lang. I know, but I don't understand. Why us? The island wants you, lassie. You and the doctor. Us? We're just the staff. You two are the special ones. But you're setting us all free tonight. One way or another. Who is us? Me and, well, you'll see soon enough. You should go and check on your friends. I heard something of a ruckus down in carriage too. Oh, and Lassie. I'm sorry about all this. I didn't know Sepulchre was pronounced Sepulchre. I, uh, I used the name Sepulchre on a, uh, a game I played for a long time, for like six years. Like an online multiplayer game, and uh, I always pronounced it <laughs> Sepulchre. Alright, well. Anyone here? Just Isaiah. My friend Isaiah. Hey, Isaiah. Hey, Al. How you doing? I'm. I'm surprisingly okay. Man, really? You and Gavin were really going at it. We... we were? Yeah. I've never seen a girl cuss out her boyfriend like that. Well, ex-boyfriend, I guess now. Oh. Oh, yeah, that was tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. That was tonight? Like, half an hour ago? Yeah, are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Time's... time's a little fucked up for me right now. Don't worry about it. Alright. Sophia took Carly into the other room. Maybe you should, I don't know, try and patch things up, if you want. Last time, I left it. I blamed them both. I was so sure. So sure. My friends would never talk to me about it. Or maybe I just wouldn't listen. I need to find out what really happened. Maybe tonight I can make things right. Well, let's ask about what happened. So, in your opinion... In my opinion, she was all over him. Gavin tried to get rid of her. She wasn't having any of it. You walked in? You walked in at the worst time, right? I don't know. All I'm saying is, from where I was standing, your boy didn't look like he was having a good time of it. I wondered that. I always did. But... Gavin admitted it. He said he wanted to end it too, that he wanted to see other people. He never defended himself. You didn't really give him a chance to. You kicked him right out. Oh, I mean afterwards, in the weeks after. Wait, that hasn't happened here yet. Never mind. Girl, you're making my head spin with this. Anyway, my advice is go talk to Carly. She sobered up. She'll tell you Gavin did nothing wrong. Okay. In a bit. 
Yeah, let's ask about where Gavin went, because sounds like we need to talk to him at the end of all this. He's gone, right? Yeah, your boy bounced after you threw that cup at him. Real mood killer. Okay, don't make me feel worse about it. Hey, it was kind of funny, really. At least it was just a plastic cup. Last I saw, he was headed off. Maybe you should call him. Tomorrow. I will tomorrow. And finally, let's ask about our stalker, Rob. Have you seen Rob about? Don't know the dude. My neighbor. From across the hall? Oh, nah. He ain't been by that I've seen. Okay. Isaiah, you remember those nuisance phone calls? Huh? No, you ain't mentioned that to me. Oh, shit. Yeah. They start in a few days. What? Nothing. Existential crisis. Don't worry about it. Man, that's the theme of the night, all right. Okay. Fuck it. I'm gonna go talk to Carly. Like I said, she's next door with Sophia. Okay, cool. Have a good night, Isaiah. Peace. Yeah, peace. Peace, buddy. <laughs> I don't want to talk to these people. They're not meant to be here. All right. Not even Rob? <laughs> He's clearly right there. All right, let's go to 2B, and then I'm sure we'll go to 2C to find out what's up with Lydia. Apparently Carly and Sophia are in here. Hey, Alex, you need to talk Carly down. I am Judas. I am Judas. I am Judas. She's freaking out. She, she has a noose around her neck. Look, she threw herself at Gavin, there's no easy way to say it, okay? So Isaiah said. I am Judas. I am the betrayer. <sighs> Who in the blue fuck is that? What? Carly. No, that dude. Alex, don't dick around. Just talk to Carly. Please. I can't do this anymore. I am the sinner. I am the whore. Carly, the voice actress for Carly sounds like my friend Cat for the win, but I really doubt it's her. <laughs> I think she would have told me. Talk to Carly. Please. Sophia is one of my best friends. Right. So, you haven't seen the grub yet. There's something wrong with his face. It's like my eyes can't focus on him. He's clutching a small bag. I'm sure we'll find out what it is soon. Carly, what the fuck happened? Alex, I have betrayed you. I am the sinner. Well, yeah, I fucking know that. I want to hear it in your words. I am Judas. I am the path to Calvary. I am the crucifixion. He promised me silver. That devil promised me silver. Where's my silver? Carly, tell me what the fuck you did. Was Gavin complicit? Silver. I want my silver. This is fucking useless. How am I meant to find any silver? Uh, do I have any silver? No, I don't really. Okay, fuck that. Do you want a party hat? Nah. Do you want a balloon? Nah. Grub doesn't want a party. Where's your silver? I don't know. Hey, you got any money on you? Yeah, there's some in my purse. You can grab it. Where's your purse? Just over there. See? On the seat opposite. Uh, oh. Uh, so nobody sees the grub. Hey, can you understand me? <sighs> I need that bag. Can I have it? <sighs> Is this the weird guy Don said he gave his matches to? Maybe he wants a lighter instead. Hey, how about a trade? This lighter for the bag? Uh, terrific. Three dollars and four cents. 
Hopefully this will do. It's money, anyway. Adventure game logic. Here you go. Here, will this do? Silver. My silver. Gavin doesn't want me, Alex. He wanted you. He wanted you, and it kills me. You were the noose around my neck, Alex. You. Gavin wanted you, and you sent him into the cold. You sent him into the earth. What the hell do you mean, into the earth? Oh, you poor, sweet dear. You have no clue, do you? Not really, no. If only he could have explained. He wouldn't face me. I tried, Carly. God, I tried. I wanted to meet up, to try and talk it through, but he wouldn't. Just terse phone calls that turned into text messages that turned into nothing. Almost as if. Almost as if. We only want to protect you, Alex. All of us only want to protect you. You're no fucking use, are you? <laughs> ah, once again, well executed. <laughs> Alright. Guessing you don't want a party hat or a green balloon. These are probably for Lydia, I'm guessing. Well, that's that. We're getting closure. A compartment door. We're getting closure from everybody, so I think this is the last stop. To use train terminology. Alex! Hey, I missed you. I keep hearing weird noises on this train. And a man keeps looking in at me through the door. You mean Don, the conductor? No, a strange man. I've never seen him before. I don't like him. I want my daddy. My daddy's gonna get me from the station. He said he got me a present. I hope it's a doll. I collect dolls. Oh. Oh, Lydia, sweetie. Oh, what's your daddy's name? My daddy's called Robert Crow. Oh, God. I thought yep. so. Do you know my daddy? Yeah. Yeah, I... Your daddy misses you very much, Lydia. Very, very much. This... This train journey you're on. Do you remember how it ends? I remember a man and a doll. It was cold. We got off the train early. He said he was my daddy's friend, and then... And then I'm back on the train and we're gonna see daddy. I can take you to see your daddy right now if you want. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. That's what the man said too, but he had a doll from daddy to prove it. I see. So we know what we gotta do. Man, you know, I have to say, uh, of the three chapters, this is far and away the best. I like this more than, uh, Sepulchre. Feels like there's more of a, like, Sepulchre was more just confusion, and this is more coherent, I guess. Anyway. Well, he's not here to keep us from taking it anymore. I don't want Rob to get this back. I'll take it. It's odd. It's a porcelain doll. It... I think it has my hair. Right. Same thing you said earlier. Okay. Uh, Dawn's nowhere to be found, of course. Maybe... Maybe Dawn is Lydia's murderer? I, I don't... I don't know. They're all linked somehow, like we found a link to everybody except for Dawn, and she said that he looks familiar, so he has to be somebody. Everybody's linked together except for except for him, and I guess, uh, well, I guess Lloyd, but Lloyd was connected to Harold, which is why, uh, why Alex can't see him or, or can't interact with him. Hey, Lydia, I have something for you. Oh wow! That's the doll I saw with Daddy! You really have met him! 
Yeah, do you want to go see him? Yeah, let me just... Hey, who's that? Lydia? Lydia? Yep. Let's have a look. It's... It's full of dirt. The dirt's moving. It's full of worms. Oh, God, gross. There's something in there, too, but there's no way I'm plunging my hand into that teeming mess. Okay, we can figure it out. Uh, scoop it out with the party hat. I'll just scoop some of this dirt away. Huh. It's my knife. I'll take that. We're gonna have to kill Don? We're gonna have to kill somebody with a steak knife. I shouldn't mess with it. Alright, fine. A window. Okay. I just wanna see if, uh, if her description changes. That's why I keep clicking on the same things. Huh. Is that music coming from the bar? Is Floyd finally back? Cause I could sure use a fucking stiff drink right about now. I wonder if it is Lloyd or if it's somebody else. It is him, I think. Floyd the barman. Time for a drink. Hey, uh, hey Floyd? Ah, yes, Miss Davenport. So nice to see you again. Please take a seat. I'd rather stand, but... But... Gavin. Hello, Alex. Oh, Gavin. Oh, God, Gavin. Good to see your face again. <laughs> How could you leave me like that? How could you do this to me? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me what an ass I was being? Would that I could, sweetheart. What do you mean? It was uncharacteristic, wasn't it? I mean, we've had fights before, haven't we? Yeah, I just... You told me you were sick of it. Sick of me. You hurt me so fucking bad, Gavin. You reached into every single wound you know I have and poked the fuck around. All because I made a mistake? A mistake you could have so easily rectified? Let me pour you a drink, babe. Fine. Gin. Straight. So I guess I understand now why they changed voice actors. It was for continuity. It must all be so confusing. I... I wasn't prepared for all this. I thought I'd led a simple life. I thought this would be easy. It's never easy. Everyone has secrets. Even that Lang fellow. You'd think he'd be the most boring guy in existence, but he had a lot of skeletons in his closet, let me tell you. Why are you here? Why are you on the train? How long have you been here? Since you came aboard. It's different for whoever rides old Gloria. There's always a Don, there's always a Floyd. But for you two, they were us. We're all connected in ways you were only just beginning to understand. This is bigger than us, Alex. We are all the children of Augur Peak, and we're all going home. You can thank Katerina when you see her. She's found something on that island, something that's changed the sepulcher forever. Anyway, you'll find out soon enough. Cat's story is a tale for another day. Yours hasn't ended yet. And what about Lang? I, I can't talk to you about Lang. Why not? Because I want to talk about me. Huh. How unusual. Hey, we're not fighting anymore, remember? Sorry. Sorry. I've just grown so used to hating you lately. Those times on the phone just after we broke up. You were so hurtful, so hateful. And it killed me too, Alex. The things we're forced to say with a gun to our heads. What do... Call me, Alex. It'll explain everything better than I could. What the hell? Okay. <phone rings> Rob? Gavin? Explain. You'll never guess who I bumped into as I left your party that night. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, Alex. It was meant to be. It was so perfect. There he was, weeping in the hall, and there I was, the good neighbor, your friend with a shoulder to cry on and a pot of coffee on the stove so we could give you some time without going too far. 
so he could wait it out, make his triumphant return after your friends had left. Everything would have gone back to the way it was. He would have continued defiling you. I could hear you both, you know, through the walls, hear the terrible things he did to you, how he forced you to moan in pleasure, to pretend to be enjoying it, how you were conditioned to be debased and defiled by these dirty fucking boys. That's fucked. That's so, so fucked. I am not some victim for you to save from consensual adult relationships. Robert, I am not your daughter. I am not Lydia. What the fuck do you know about Lydia, Alex? Mm, Tip for tat. Let's exchange stories. Ooh, okay, this is... <laughs> um... Ooh, what did we say? Your ex-wife put her on the train to come meet you. You abandoned her on a train. She ran away from home and got a train. Huh. I, I don't know what the right answer is. Yes. Yeah. She was coming to visit me. My dear, sweet Lydia. Uh... You met her at the station? You forgot to pick her up from the station. No! No, that's not how it happened at all! Oh, gosh. You met her at the station? No! Crap. She wasn't there. We searched the train, frantically. Nobody could remember seeing her. Couldn't remember where she'd gotten off, if she'd even been on in the first place. Uh, okay. I, some of these details I wasn't privy to. Nothing. Nothing. Eventually they gave up searching. But I knew, I knew, Alex, that my baby was out there somewhere. Dead. Just waiting to be found. That I couldn't save her. But then I met you, and I saw how you needed saving. You remind me of the woman Lydia would have grown up to become. I'm not your fucking daughter, Robert. Now tell me about Gavin. Well, I couldn't have that... that dirty boy putting his hands all over my beautiful porcelain doll. I couldn't have it. I'm a pharmacist, you know. I know how to do things to people. To drug them. To knock them out. To paralyze them. A few cuts here and there, a few threats, and I know how to make them say what I want them to. You should have... Oh, you should have seen the look on his face as he made those phone calls to you, as I pressed the knife to his balls and whispered, Keep going. And you should see him now, four months and still alive. I had to remove his other leg last weekend. No good now. Not with the gangrene. Amazed you've never noticed the smell. It's incredible. How compliant someone is when they know the person they love is just across the hall. Incredible how easy it is to keep someone alive while locked in a tiny, tiny room. And... And he wasn't dirty anymore. I cleaned him up. I did. Made him a porcelain doll. Just like you. A frozen porcelain doll. Kevin? This isn't true, is it? This is just... One of the sepulchre's fucked up fantasies. It's true. I'm there. I'm alive. Of course, so is Robert, at least for the time being. It's probably about time a neighbor noticed the smell and called the cops. Would you like that, eh, Robert? No, I like you better with your tongue cut out, Gavin. Well, that explains why the phone calls stopped, Alex. Well, there's not much left to take. He's just a head on a torso now. Oh, it's beautiful, Alex. He is the perfect man. You are so, so fucked up. You are fucking fucked. I hope you fucking die and rot in hell, you piece of shit. What is going on here, kids? That lying fella's trying to get some sleep. You're all screaming loud enough to wake the dead. Evening, Floyd. Evening, Donald. Oh, hi. I see how it is. We need fair good time on this one, lassie. Floyd, 
a whiskey, if you'd be so kind. Coming right up, sir. Anyways, don't let old Don get in the middle of your dramatic revelation, kids. Don't mind me. I'm just taking the weight off my feet. Pretend like I'm not here. So now what? You have to end this. My neighbor, Rob. My stalker, Rob. You think you know someone. Gavin, my ex-boyfriend. Apparently Rob's held him hostage for months. I can't even comprehend what he's done to him. When I saw him earlier, I thought he was old. Eh, same description. All right. I think we know what we gotta do, right? I mean, is there a choice here? Is there? Lloyd. Donald. Don't reckon that's how it was meant to go. Do you? Can't say I do, no. This one. He's reaching through, isn't he? Looks that way. Oh, Logger's not going to be happy about this. I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. Can't interfere. Cassell? No. Don't! I'm sorry. I don't want to be alone right now. You can't hear me anyway. I wasn't... I wasn't prepared. Not for this. I thought I'd see him. Keith. My father. Instead I found... this. I don't know what was real. Rob, Gavin, Carly, Lydia, and you, Dr. Harold Lang. I bet you thought you weren't going to make it here tonight, like I did. I don't think either of us made it here tonight. The train's stopping. I hope you wake up, Dr. Lang. I hope we both wake up. There's a fog rolling in. I can barely see the town. Well, that's gonna make today's work even more fun. Goddamn. Still, Harry and Alex should be here later today. I hope they had a safe journey.
Thank you.